fourth is rejection sampling. Let's see. So what is sampling? Why do we need sampling? Sampling is the process of drawing a subset of data according to the distribution that the data follows. This is often important if you're trying to, you know, draw a subset of data points for training our machine learning model. And we want that subset to be uh, reflective of how uh, of real world data. So we want to sample these points according to the distribu uh, distribution that the data actually follows instead of just taking random samples, right? Uh, we also use sampling when we are working with Bayesian models. For example, with Bayesian models, we compute something called a posterior distribution instead of just computing a single point answer. And in order to compute this posterior, often we draw samples from the posterior instead of coming up with a formula. And sampling has often been used to approximate areas and integrals. Right? So, but what is, why do we need rejection sampling? What is this rejection sampling? So often when we want to sample, the data might come from non-trivial distributions. So if we know that the distribution from which the data is coming is not easy to sample from. So for instance, if you have a Gaussian distribution, it's easy to sample from a Gaussian distribution. Or if you have a uniform distribution, it's easy to sample from a uniform distribution. But how do you sample from you know, this kind of, you know, if this is the PDF, let's say, how do you sample from this? Right, and that's when rejection sampling typically comes in. So rejection sampling is useful if you have, you know, distributions that are hard to sample from, but that are possible to evaluate. So I'll tell you what we mean by this. So, but before that, let's just, you know, go to a simple example, a toy example of rejection sampling, where let's say we have to sample points in this 2D example from the circle at random. Now what we can do is, we can draw a square around the circle, right, and this is the square, and sampling points from the square is super easy, because we just draw an x and a y, both uniformly between minus 1 and 1. So you pick a random x and you pick a random y and you get some point in the square. It could be outside the circle or inside the circle, right, you could pick a x between minus 1 and 1 and y between minus 1 and 1 and you can end up here. Now rejection sampling says that can we figure out whether this point is inside the circle or outside the circle? So how do we figure out if a point is inside the circle? So if x square plus y square is less than or equal to one, that means it's, you know, within this, uh, then, then we know that this is uh, inside the circle because that's the equation of the circle as we know, right? So I will draw a random point and I will try to compute if it lies inside the circle. If it lies inside the circle, if the point is here, I will accept it, keep the point. If it lies outside the circle, I will discard the point, right? And if I keep doing that, eventually, uh, I get points that are uniformly distributed within this circle. Okay, so now this is very simple because we are talking about uniform distributions here. We sampled points uniformly distributed in the square area and then we sort of Want, what we wanted was uniform distribution within the circle because both of them are uniform it was a little easier to do this another example is if you have like a more complicated shape like a flower like this right again you know you can actually sample points in the square and keep the point if it's within the flower and reject otherwise right so you the Rejection sampling technique is useful when it's hard to sample from the target distribution, but easy to evaluate the target. So is it easy to determine whether a point is in the flower or not? So if I'm able to do that, then I can use rejection sampling, right? Now let's, and the other thing is, now the bounding box that we choose for the circle or the flower, we want it to be as close to the original, you know, the flower as possible. So if we choose a bounding box like this, we will end up rejecting a lot of points, right? So there is more probability that a point is outside the flower than inside the flower in this case, right? Because the bounding box is very far away and we want to find tight bounding boxes, right? So that said, let's now look at, you know, a more non-trivial case. Uh, so like we said, right, we could have like complicated distributions from which our data is coming, right? Uh, this is an example of a unidimensional PDF. So let's say our data is coming from this kind of, you know, 
a cat head shaped PDF, right? And uh, this is, you know, the X and this is uh, the PDF, which is telling you the probability uh, density across the domain, right? So now how do you sample from this? This is not easy to sample from, right? So the, how rejection sampling can be used here is as follows. So first we can pick a distribution that is easy to sample from, let's say a normal distribution. So this is a normal distribution, this G of X, while F of X is this cat face distribution, which is not easy to sample from, right? So now what we want to do is typically, this G of X is something, a simpler distribution, and we want to find a scaled version of this G of X such that it's always above F of X. So if you remember, we took the bounding box in the earlier case, this is something like that. So once we uh, fix this G of X, which is easy to sample from, we also come up with like, you know, a scaled version of G of X that's actually sitting above the F of X, right? And we call this like, you know, this is just like, you know, like a bounding curve that's on top of F of X, which is in the same shape as G of X, right? This is like the bounding box you could think maybe, right? And now, the way the algorithm works is first we sample a point from G of X, which could be like, you know, a normal distribution or something simple that we talked about. Let's say this is the point. Now, this point was generated with the PDF, you know, G of X. That's the probability, right? And the spread of G of X is like this. But what we want the spread of probability to be is something like, you know, the F, the cat face. That's what we want the probability density to be spread as, right? So what we do is we try to, you know, add some correction here by taking a ratio of what we want the probability to be and the probability that we actually picked it with, right? So the F of X and G of X, we want to take the ratio of F of X and G of X. And then we multiply with this M to make sure the denominator is like, you know, greater than the or equal to the numerator. And we accept or reject this point with this probability, the ratio of what we want and what we actually sample the probability with which we actually sampled. So this is the rejection sampling algorithm and this is the formula for the rejection sampling algorithm. So you generate a uniform random variable between 0 and 1. If it is less than f of x by m into g of x, you accept. Otherwise, you reject the point that you generated from g of x initially. Right? Okay, so to summarize what we learned, we saw why we want to sample in the first place and why rejection sampling. So rejection sampling is used when we have distributions that are hard to sample from, but those that are easy to evaluate, right? And uh, typically the way it works is that we sample a point from the proposal distribution, which is a simpler distribution to sample from. And then we accept or reject that point according to the ratio of densities between the actual target distribution that we want and the proposal distribution. And this algorithm is the basis for uh, many other MCMC algorithms like Metropolis Hastings and so on. Thank you.